We never know here at CHFI who we're going to run into, either in the halls or in the elevator. And today, look who I ran into. Matt Nathanson. I was down in the lobby. I was cleaning the floor. Yeah. You know, that's a what little I, was, I, was, yeah, job. I was doing a little clean up. And it was like, hey, good to see you. So yeah. I came up. Matt actually was uh, going to be in the building doing some business for somebody else. I said, come on in. We've oh, got to yeah. be able to talk to you. It's awesome. Matt Nathanson is the singer, the artist responsible for that fabulous hit that we play on CHFI. Come on, get higher that we absolutely love. Our fans love it. It's uh, been a staple at CHFI for a couple of years. And that song, it really uh, was a little bit of a late bloomer. Do you want to tell us the story about yeah, that? Yeah, I don't know what happened. You know, like, it just slowly, the record came out in 2007. And then we just kept kind of, that song just kept going. We had a, we had a first single, Car Crash, that kind of did well, but not great. And then Come On Get Higher was the second single. And all of a sudden, it just started happening like and it caught it was like fire it was like a wild it sort of like caught a tree caught another tree and it like just kept going so we followed this song and i have no idea why but it was like an incredibly validating experience you know to have folks relate to to a song of mine like they like they did to that song oh it was cool when a song resonates, you can't stop it. And not it, only, it has a life of its own, and it just takes off. It's because the song, I've been saying this a lot lately, that the song is, is, the song is God, right? The song is like the center of it all. And, and when you write them and when you play them, you can sort of tell that people are being, you know, are experiencing it, but you never know what it is about a song. I have no idea why, if I was going to boil it down to its parts, why come on it higher reacts with people the way it does. It's a feel-good song. It's it, it's which, a song that does make you feel good which, when you listen to it. Which is funny because for me, it's like a longing. It's a song of like missing and, and, you know what I mean? It's a song of sort of like, it's a gut-wrenching letter to someone. Sort of, you know what I mean? But it does have sort of this feel to it and the vocal. It's a really strange uh, trip. And you did it on Letterman, you did it on Ellen, and that was part of it all taking off. And you played in 2007 at the Elma Combo. So that would have been for the album when it first came yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. And then you came back after the song was launched and became a, a hit, and you played at uh, the Mott Club, and I was there in the oh, audience. That was fun. That was you were having show. so much fun, and you know, you're a stand-up comedian. Like, what's with that? I don't know. Where did that come from? It's, it, when the audience is, 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 is there to have a good time, it's like you're throwing a party, you know, and... and it's always Toronto has always been fantastic in that respect. It's like it's great. You get this energy. I like to think of it as like a potluck. Everybody brings a little something, you know, and I'm just the host. I just kind of bounce around between everybody, make sure everybody's having a good time. And so, you know, talking and making jokes is part of the balance because this to me, the songs are these sort of heavy things, you know, that come from my life. And so to be able to kind of throw in a goofy cover or a funny story about something to me it really balances this it, the whole experience and when the crowd is there like at the mod club to have a good time it's effortless because their energy it just sort of buoys you up and you can kind of ride it and as i watched you that night i was thinking my gosh this guy he's so comfortable that was the thing that resonated with me as well that night is he's so comfortable on stage you've been doing this for a long time long time yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think it's funny that you say that because I think the talking between songs also makes me feel more comfortable. I think getting up there and just performing for people, it's it, to me it's this it's a very much a collision of human beings live shows. It's like a collision of sound and humans on stage and people in the audience and the artist. It's this it's like community. And so the more I'm able to sort of be myself on stage, the more comfortable I am, the more the experience for me, it's sort of a selfish thing, but the more the experience for me is is sort of like, tra can be transcendent, you know what I mean? So I allow people in because I can sort of let my guard down. And uh, and so, yeah. And so you get you give us a great live show, so yeah. it's fun. It's we, fun. You don't just stand up there and sing your songs, you know, we, we get to participate. Now, after uh, Come On, Get Higher, big hit, you got invited to one of the most famous uh, houses on the entire planet. Daryl's house. Daryl Hall's house. Daryl has this website, and I've talked about it on CHFI often. He's one of my favorite guys, and I'm not afraid oh, to say yeah. it. My husband knows I'd run away with him. <laughs> Love him. I'd run away with him. He's I'm, so cool. He is the bomb. And when you got invited, how, like, what when that first invitation came, what did you feel like? So the first thing I felt was this incredible sense of like, how am I going to do this? Right. Because when you go, they give you, they say, pick a, pick a Hall and Oates, Hall and Oates songs you want to do. And when you're, when you're faced with like 30 hit songs 
and they're strange hit songs. You know what I mean? Like the chord changes under the vocal. I was intimidated by this experience because I knew the players that were going to be there were some of my favorite players. Sean Pelton was playing drums. T-Bone, rest his soul, yes. was playing guitar. Yeah. It was just like... It was sort of like submerging in it. It was like getting invited to a high stakes poker game. You know what I mean? Where you're like. You and everybody's get, way richer totally than you. Totally. Everybody's yeah. rich and like really good at reading people. And so, but th- that was what's so great about Daryl's house is that, again, it's like a really inviting place where they're, they really support and make you feel like you can do it. You can be a part of this. And, and it was, there was no pre, there was no like sort of ego involved at all. It was very much like dropping in with friends and we make dinner, we make lunch, we hang out. It happened to be snowing that day, yeah. like an incredible snowstorm. So we were like there till very late. It was beautiful. He's got these beautiful homes that he had, two of them that he had sort of taken, dismantled from rural Pennsylvania and then rebuilt. There's no nails. It's all just sort of pegs. Wow. Rebuilt, beautiful copper sinks. And then you sort of show up. He's got a barn that connects the two houses. And you just kind of eat. And, like, again, this idea of colliding with people, this idea of, of like, human interaction. It's just this great throwdown of, like, people's musical experiences all coming together. And the fact that you got invited. I mean, there's something obviously underlying in your music that resonates and is very similar to what he does. Yeah. It yeah. Was, that was, too, was a really validating experience, sort of yeah. rub. There was a bunch of those experiences at the in that record cycle where I was playing with my heroes. You know, I went on tour with the Indigo Girls, who are the reason that I play acoustic guitar, literally the reason. And it's like, got to play with Daryl, got to... I became friends with the Matchbox 20 guy. Like, just great, like... It was a really cool moment where I felt accepted, seamlessly accepted into this group of people. And, uh, I mean, as a music nerd, that's pretty much a dream. You the know? coolest thing on the yeah. planet. So you've got a new album, yeah. Modern Love, out next month, the, the first single. It's on my iPod. I, love I it. absolutely love it. Rule. And you know one of the reasons I love it? Third word in the, in the opening line. What is it? Delicious. My favorite word on the entire world because that, a... that describes everything in life. Yeah, it's a pretty so fantastic. So it's a great song. It's Where did it come from? great word. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what you, uh, th- that song came from this idea, a very sensual idea that like sometimes things that aren't the best for you can be incredibly alluring and seductive. And so it's about a relationship that's sort of like. Not the best thing for you, but it feels so great. You could have played it for Arnold Schwarzenegger. I know. Can you imagine? Oh, Arnie. <laughs> I know. I know. Anyway, we we go off way oh off topic. Oh my gosh! But yes, I can. That, I can understand that. Condoms, you know? Arnold. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, simple. No kidding. <laughs> simple. Not not to mention infidelity is not the way to go. No, no kidding. But if no you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna be an idiot. Be a smart idiot. Yes, and not not have her in your same house. I mean, that's unreal. That's like yeah. the most. I mean, she. The, Maria Shriver, she, I mean, she must have, I, I don't know how you could hit Arnold Schwarzenegger and make an impact, but I bet she wanted to, like, drive over him with the Absolutely. Hummer. Like, Absolutely. Can you imagine? There's a little something we're not knowing. Too. Like, the fact that she was in the house for a decade and, ick. He's a, yes. He's a scumbag. The opposite of delicious, ick. Yeah, the opposite of delicious is, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger's sort of, like, weird, <laughs> like, face. Doesn't he yeah. look like a bag of rocks put together, sort he of does. strangely? Yeah, he yeah, does. So. Okay, so let's talk oh, yeah. about Sorry. Modern Love. Sorry. So what else is on the album? Now, it's not out yet, so what can we look forward yeah, to? Yeah, so the record is, we've been talking a lot about this idea of, like, human interaction, right? This idea of the collision of people. And Modern Love is about the, the modern is this cold, concept like technology angular and then love is the sort of visceral molten part of ourself and so the idea for the record and the songs on the record are about that dichotomy this idea that like in a time of fast forward when when people are having relationships on facebook and twitter and everything which is great but but where they're actually in lieu of having real relationships and real encounters um conversations conversations sexual experience like you know what i mean like um where does the great stuff musically um and then the parts and as us as humans where do those things exist now and so the record sort of deals with that in every song it kind of deals with the idea that in a time of super hyper speed where does the steeping and the parts of us that really matter and really fulfill us where do those come to the surface wow yeah that is so awesome i can't wait to hear the whole oh, album i can't wait for you i to haven't hear it. i haven't heard it i just have we'll fasting. Get it for you that, i would love to hear awesome. it well that is terrific and you're going to uh perform some songs yeah 
You're all set to do that? You can do that? I can do Even that. Even though I just wrangled you off the I elevator? I am so down. I just that happened so cool. to, in my mop bucket, yeah. I just happened to have an acoustic guitar. Ah, it's amazing how those things work. Awesome. Matt Nathanson, we absolutely love you. You are the best. Thank you. And we wish you all the best with the album. It's out June 21st. Yeah. And I know tonight you're playing at Garrison. It's yeah. a sold-out show, and you're just going to have a rocking good time. It's going to be a blast. Yeah. All the best. Thanks so much. Thanks.